In Castle Bromwich Solihull, Hill, there's a historic conservation area comprising Castle Bromwich Hall, the gardens, and a unique church. This is the story of St. Mary and St. Margaret Church, but let's start at the beginning. In 1715, the Castle Bromwich estate is the home of Sir John and Lady Ursula Bridgman and their family. Sir John inherited the house from his father four years previously, and the Bridgmans have spent several years remodelling Castle Bromwich Hall and its garden. I'd like to know what time you would like dinner, my lady. Tell cook six o'clock is good. Thank you, Mary. Oh! John, do come here to the window, my dear. Mm hmm? John, we really must do something about this. What, my dear? Well, the church. It's so shabby and old-fashioned and totally out of keeping with the hall. I'm ashamed to take visitors into that part of the garden. We should call our master mason and see what should be done. Hmm. I quite agree, my dear. I shall summon him forthwith. Mr. White, the Master Mason, is here to see you, Sir John. Hmm. 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 Ah, Mr. White. Welcome, welcome. Did you have a good journey, Mr. White? Greetings, Sir John. Lady Ursula. It was tolerable, Sir John. At least the coach stopped near the hall. I'd like you to come over to this window, if you will. I need you to demolish the chapel and build the church in keeping with the modern style of the hall. But, Sir John, I would hesitate to demolish a house of God. Also, to build a new chapel is extremely expensive. But, I may have an alternative for you. Well, Sir John, are you satisfied with the church? My dear sir, you've exceeded my expectations. Well done, I say, well done. If only Lady Ursula were here to admire the result of your work. God rest her soul. Amen, Sir John. Amen. This is St Mary and St Margaret, the parish church of Castle Bromwich. It is a handsome, brick-built church, completed in 1731 as the private chapel to the hall, and later became the parish church. Let's take a look around. The first thing that you see is the Italian marble font, installed in 1731. Here christenings take place, a ceremony that marks the introduction of a child into the Christian church. Looking up, the plasterwork above the south door carries an inscription which documents Sir John Bridgman's rebuilding of the church. This chapel was begun to be rebuilt in the year of our Lord, 1726 and finished in the year 1731. 18th century churches are very light and don't usually have stained glass windows. These were added in the 19th century. An unusual survivor in our church are the high box pews. These were for the members of the parish and most of these would have had doors onto the aisle. Of course, the Lord of the Manor would have had family pews set aside from the congregation. These are the initials of Sir John Bridgman, 
the second baronet, the owner of the manor of Castle Bromwich and rebuilder of the church. Separating the side aisles from the nave is an arcade of classic Tuscan pillars with round arches. The ceiling is elaborately decorated with fine plasterwork in the Baroque style, and although in need of restoration, it is possible to appreciate the beauty of the detailing, especially in the chancel area. At the east end of the church, there's the chancel, where Holy Communion takes place. The communion rails contain the coat of arms of King George II. It's unusual for this to be in such a central position. The pulpit is a very rare survivor. It is a triple decker. Sermons were preached from the top. The high pulpit reflects the Protestant emphasis on preaching, as opposed to the celebration of the Mass. Looking back to the main body of the church, we can see the very fine organ and the choir gallery. This was installed in 1815. Here we have an 18th century church. This is very rare and it is only one of the four remaining in Birmingham. It remained in this style and wasn't modernised later because the Bridgman family married into land and money and moved to the family seat to Western Park, Shropshire. Castle Bromwich estate was left as a residence for relatives or rented out. This beautiful 18th century church is preserved for us to admire and use as a place of worship. But there is more to this church than meets the eye. All buildings need care. In 1893, restoration work was undertaken. The work was given to Charles Bateman, a local architect. I started my work with a detailed survey of the building and while measuring the interior of the church, I noticed something very odd. The columns of the nave did not align with the window piers and the arches between the columns had a shallower curve than was usual. Both very strange features as Georgian buildings are normally very regular. I decided to investigate further. I climbed up through a small trapdoor above the north door of the church and through the small space into the roof. At the top I was astounded by what I saw. Instead of the normal method of construction for a Georgian church I was expecting, I found the massive timbers of a medieval roof. The normal method of construction for a 14th century church, not an 18th century one. There was even evidence of medieval painting. Back in the church, I decided to investigate the columns. I removed some of the panelling and found that, instead of stone or plaster, the core of the column was an ancient timber post. The lower part had been panelled and the top shaped to form the Tuscan column. Could it be that the Georgian church had been built around an earlier structure? The timbers used for the posts are huge, over seven metres tall, and must have been hundreds of years old when felled. These would have been trees from acorns planted before the Battle of Hastings in 1066. After many more measurements and investigations, I drew what I had found under the Georgian exterior of the church, a perfectly preserved 14th century wooden church. I then tried to imagine what the interior of the church would have looked like. Bateman had found our church within a church, but the story doesn't end there. I turned my attention to the outside of the church. I noticed that the main part of the church had brickwork down to ground level. Then when I looked at the chancel, it had stonework to ground level. Another mystery. I looked at the chancel. It was also considerably longer than I would expect for an 18th century building. Removing some of the panelling, instead of finding plaster, brick or timber, I found sandstone. There was even evidence of sacred painting on the walls. Further evidence of the chancel being part of an older chapel. 
Later researchers found a document that references a chapel dedicated to the Blessed Virgin Mary at Castle Bromwich in 1165. The chapel is therefore at least 850 years old. My research led me to an engraving of the church completed by Henry Bayton showing the recently refurbished hall and gardens in 1726, the year the church rebuilding started. It clearly shows a small stone chapel as part of the refurbished church. It was later encased in brick too. We have evidence that what started from a small stone chapel in the 12th century was extended to a wooden church in the 14th century, then encased in 18th century brick. The church is unique and there is no other church like it in the whole of the United Kingdom. It is Grade 1 listed. This is the story of St Mary and St Margaret, the church within a church. It has remained at the heart of Christian worship in Castle Bromwich for at least 850 years. It is strange to think that we can receive communion in the same place that the residents of Castle Bromwich have done for hundreds of years. In 2012, a new community hall was built and is used seven days a week for church and community activities. The hall and church are much loved by the congregation and local community. Thank you for listening. By visiting our church, you have become part of our story, helping us to preserve the church so that it remains part of our community for many years to come. Do come again to visit us. This video is dedicated to the memory of William Darg, a local historian and bell captain who was devoted to this church and its history for over 40 years.